Hello there, Mr. Sutton bringing you the IM23 Honors 3-1 homework answers on triangle theorems. For number one, we're trying to find this missing x side of this right triangle. Since it's the right triangle, we can use our Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. The c side, the hypotenuse, is going to be x, so we'll have 33 squared plus 56 squared equals x squared. And then let's square these on our calculator. So 56 squared, that's going to be 3136. 33 squared, that's 1089. If we add those together, that comes out to 4225. And we'll just square root that now, which gives us a final answer of 65. For number two, trying to find this missing side of a right triangle, we'll start with the Pythagorean theorem. Now the C side on this one is going to be 50. That's the side across from the right angle. Um, so that means that we've got x squared and 30 squared being added together, and that's going to equal 50 squared. So we'll have x squared plus 900 equals 2,500. 2,500 minus 900, that's going to be 1,600. And then the square root of 1,600 gives us 40. Um, now, you might have seen that this was a 3, 4, 5 triangle, and you could have used that also to get 40 out of this. For number 3, we're trying to find the area of this isosceles triangle. That means we'll need 1 half base times height. We have the base 32 already, still need the height. Since that's part of a right triangle, though, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find it. Now, the base of this right triangle over here, um, since you have an isosceles triangle and you're doing one of these altitudes, that actually cuts the side here, this third side, in half. So this is going to be 16 right here for this side. Um, so now using our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we can say h squared plus 16 squared, because these are the two legs of the right angle, equals our hypotenuse of 20 squared. So that's 400 and 256. 400 minus 256 gives us 144, and the square root of that is 12. Um, now, that was one way of doing it. You might have also recognized that this was in a, a 3, 4, 5 ratio, right? Because if you multiply the 3, 4, 5, all of those by 4, you've got the 16, you've got the 20, and that means this other one would have to be 12. Um, so either way, we have that height now of 12. So now we'll use 1 half base times height. Uh, so that's 1 half times 32 times 12. So that's essentially going to be, let's see here, 6 times 32, um, which is going to come out to, let's see, 6 times 30 is 180, 6 times 2 is 12, 180 plus 12, 192. And that'll be feet squared. we got to have units because this is a, a real-life unity kind of problem. For number four, in baseball, the distance of the paths between each pair of consecutive bases is 90 feet, and the paths form right angles. How far does the ball need to travel if it's thrown from home plate directly to second base? So for this one, uh, it helps if you have a picture. Here is your standard baseball diamond if you've never played baseball before. Uh, we have four bases. This is home plate here at the bottom. This is first base, second base, third base. So and we said we had uh, right angles between the paths, and each path from the bases was 90 feet. So we're trying to figure out this distance right here from home plate all the way to second base. Since we've got a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem for this. So we'll have 90 squared plus 90 squared equals our hypotenuse of x squared. That's uh, 8,100, so 8,100 plus itself. Those are both going to add up to, let's see here, uh, 16,200. And now to simplify this, um, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to put this in simplest radical form. Um, but I know that I added two of these 8100s together to get this. Um, so that means that this is really just 8100 times 2, which means that I can just square root this 8100 to get 90. Uh, so 90 radical 2 feet, or whatever the decimal equivalent is, would be our answer for this. For number 5, we're trying to figure out if this is a right triangle. We will use the Pythagorean theorem to decipher this. Um, so for my C value, that's going to be the longest side, so 89 squared. And we're trying to see if 39 squared plus 80 squared actually adds up to that. Um, so definitely going to use the calculator for this. So we've got 
39 squared and 80 squared gives us 6,400, and then 89 squared, that's 79.21. So let me just write all that down. Now, does 1521 plus 6,400 equal 7,921? Um, you might be able to add this one in your head. You'll see that it does, in fact, come out the same. So that means that this is a right triangle. For number six, we want to order the sides of the triangle from shortest to longest. We know that bigger sides are across from bigger angles, so I'm going to order the angles from smallest to largest and then go from there. Uh, so we have this 30 followed by 60 followed by 85. So the shortest side then will be across from the 35 degrees, that's this BD side, followed by the side across from 60, so DC or CD. And then this BC side is going to be the longest side because that's across from the longest angle. For number seven, we want to order the angles of the triangle from smallest to largest. Again, bigger sides are across from bigger angles. So if I order my sides from smallest to largest, the angles across from them will go in the same order. So we've got seven, less than nine, less than 12. So the smallest angle then is across from this seven side. That'll be angle C. Uh, the next biggest one is across from nine, so B. And then D is the biggest angle across from the biggest side. For number eight, we want to know if these three numbers can be the measures of the sides of a triangle. For this, we will use our triangle inequality theorem, which says the third side has to be between the difference and the sum of the other two sides. For C, I'll use 12. And then for A and B, I'll use 24 and 9. I just want my A to be bigger than B because I'm subtracting them here. So we've got 12, and we're seeing if that's between 24 minus 9 and 24 plus 9. Well, 24 minus 9 is 15, 24 plus 9 is 33. Uh, 12 is not between those numbers, so these cannot be the measures of a triangle sides. For number 9, we have two sides of a triangle. We want the range of measures for the third side. Uh, so our third side is going to be between the difference and the sum of those two sides. So that means that our C side, or X, whatever you want to call it, that'll be between 11 minus 3 and 11 plus 3, or between 8 and 14. For number 10, we have a support wire for a tree that has a height of 9 feet here. Um, we want to find the length in feet of this support wire, and it's, it's anchored to the ground 12 feet away from the tree, it looks like. Um, this is just basically a Pythagorean theorem problem. We've got a right triangle. We're just looking for the hypotenuse. So we'll use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we've got 9 squared plus 12 squared equals whatever variable you want squared. We'll just stick with c, I guess. Uh, so that's 81 and 144. And we need the square root of that to actually get that third side. Those add up to 225. You might remember that the square root of 225 is 15. So 15 feet then. You also might have recognized that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle if you multiply uh, the 3, 4, and 5 all by 3, if, or if you divide these by 3. Um, so that's another way you could have gotten 15 out of this. For 11, if a triangle has two sides with lengths 3 and 8, which of the following can't be the length of a third side? Um, so triangle sides are going to be between the difference and the sum of the other two sides. Um, so this third side has to be between 8 minus 3 and 8 plus 3, or between 5 and 11. Now, 5 and 11 are not included in this range. This is just strictly less than, not less than or equal to. Um, so that means that answer choice A, 5, is out of bounds, where 6, 8, and 9 are all inside this range. So we're going with A. For number 12, we have a ladder leaning against the side of an office building, as shown below. Top of the ladder reaches a point on the building 16 feet above the ground, and the bottom is 4 feet from the base of the building. The first part of this problem is we want to write an equation that can be used to find x, the length of the ladder, in feet. So this is a right triangle. We'll use Pythagorean theorem here. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared is our starting point. And then the c side here is this x, this hypotenuse. So we can write 4 squared plus 16 squared equals x squared. For part b, we're going to use the equation from part a to actually find x, that latter length. Um, so we're going to need the square root of 4 squared plus 16 squared. 
Uh, so that's 16 plus 256, or 272 inside there. And we'll need the calculator to actually calculate that because it's not a perfect square. So plugging in square root of 272, I get back 16.5 if we round it off to the nearest tenth, and that's going to be in feet. For part C, we have a second ladder that's 32 feet long. That'll be placed against the same building, and the bottom of this ladder will be 7 feet from the base of the building. Based off of this, we want to know the height to the nearest tenth of a foot of the point the top of the second ladder is going to reach on the building. Um, so I would start this one by drawing a new diagram. We've got a new right triangle. In this one now, the hypotenuse they're giving us is 32. That's the ladder length. And this bottom of the triangle is going to be 7 feet. We're trying to figure out this last side here that gives us the height of the ladder as it touches the building. All right, so we'll use Pythagorean theorem for this one again. Um, this time around, we can write x squared plus 7 squared equals 32 squared. And to solve this one, we're going to have to do 32 squared minus 7 squared, and then take the square root of all that to get x by itself. Uh, this is a calculator part. So I'm plugging square root of 32 squared minus 7 squared into the calculator. And that gives me about 31.2. And that'll also be in feet. Number 13 is a little bit tricky. Um, we're given this 60 degree angle and these two 10 sides here. We're asked for the length of this third side. Now, unfortunately, since this is not a right angle, we can't just use Pythagorean theorem to find that third side. Got to use some other stuff. The key on this one is realizing that this is an isosceles triangle. Um, you have these two sides that are exactly the same. That means that the angles across from them will also be exactly the same. Congruent sides means congruent opposite angles. Well, how much is left for these two sides that we know are going to be the, or these two angles that we know are exactly the same? We've used up 60 degrees. 180 minus 60 means we have 120 degrees left over. So that means each of these unknown angles has to be half of that, or 60. Well, if we have 60, 60, and 60, that means we've actually got an equilateral triangle. We know that if all the angles in the triangle are the same, all of the sides are going to be the same as well. Um, so that means this missing side then also has to be 10. So choice C. For number 14, we're told that AB, this, this side here, and AC equal each other. We want to know the value of this angle in the triangle. So part of the key on this one is realizing that these congruent sides mean you have an isosceles triangle, which means that this 55 degree angle and this angle over here also have to be the same. Um, so this angle C here is also going to be 55 degrees. Now that's important because we know there's 180 degrees in a triangle. You've already used up 90 degrees with this right angle right here. So that means that this X has to be that leftover 90 degrees minus the 55 that you used up in this angle C. Um, so 90 minus 55 is going to give us 35 degrees for that missing angle. Choice B. For number 15, we're given four sets of numbers, and we want to know which of the following cannot be the lengths of three sides of a triangle. Um, so for all of these, we're going to test them out in that inequality theorem, a minus b less than c less than a plus b, again saying the third side of a triangle has to be between the difference and the sum of the other two sides. So we're just going to test each of these out. Um, for part a here, I'm going to do 6 minus 4 less than 3 less than 6 plus 4. So that's going to be 2 less than 3 less than 10. Is that true? It sure is. Um, so this one checks out here. Choice A is fine. Let's check out choice B. So we got 6 minus 3 less than 5 less than 6 plus 3. So is 5 between 3 and 9? It is. This is also fine for triangle sides. Uh, choice C, 6 minus 5 less than 11 less than 6 plus 5. Is 11 between 1 and and 11? Nope. 11 is not less than 11. It's not less than itself. Um, so these could not be the sides of a triangle. Um, just for completeness, let's check out choice D just to show that it does work out. So we have 6 minus 6, less than 10, less than 6 plus 6. 10 is indeed between 0 and 12. Um, so it's choice C then that's the odd one out here.